you have to pay larger yeah you may find that some some people are teaching or giving some some element of that not the entire course right entire course kabhi nahi dega wo anyway anyway janesh good morning all good yesterday we talked about the concept of power we initiated the debate we initiated debate on the concept of power now few classes are there shavinder few are classes out there logo ko bhi dikhana hai na not ab sara nahi de sakte na yeah you are right so yesterday we talked about uh, what is power basically and we uh, discussed the few concept of power for example we discussed the concept of power over right we call this then we discussed power two and then we discussed power weight any confusion if you have in three different understanding of power any doubt if you have no so can i ask you question where uh, who is the exponent of power where can you tell me few scholar who talked about power weight or whose cons understanding of power can be related to harika hanarend very good hanarend and our understanding of power is the power word what about gandhi the gandhi a notion of power power word gandhi always understood non violence is most powerful than the violence the people are you know they when they cooperate when they you know united for a particular cause they are most powerful than the government itself the satyagraha and non violence is most powerful right fine then one more uh, author i talked about with power word john holloway john holloway who had give, give concept of anti power anti power means when people gathered at one place right and they when they have built a network of resistance and influence the government right basically john holloway talked about power from below john holloway talked about power from below for example when women you know movement influence power right because you all know that a state is a masculine state is as feminists argue that a state is a manifestation of patriarchy yeah yeah now today i will talk about first pluralist understanding of power pluralist pluralist understanding of power and then i will move to elitist theory of power 
Now look at the pluralist thinker. Who is a pluralist thinker? Robert Dahl. Now if you look at Robert Dahl understanding, the Robert Dahl studied American democracy. Robert Dahl studied American democracy. He studied American democracy. And what he saw in American democracy that there are many associations, right? There are trade unions, teacher associations, farmer organization, lawyer associations, student union, woman union, right? Corporate association. And he observed that in America, there are strong associational life. A strong association life, matlab, you know, students are organized under the student union. Farmers are organized under the farmers union. Labor are organized under the labor union. Teachers are organized under the teachers union. Corporate are organized under the industrial union. You know, similarly, uh, lawyers are organized under the lawyers association. Right. Women are organized under the women associations. Right. There are civil society group. There are civil society group. There are interest group. And what he observed that American democracy, you know, is a representative democracy, right? And the government represents the wishes of the people, the wishes of each organization, because each organization influences the government, the representative government in America. And therefore, he saw that, right, that power is dispersed. Power is this dispersed dispersed matlab power is distributed equally distributed right and it's not that government holds power no this organization influences the government if this is right each influence each organization influences the government their own way and if you look at the government the government represents the interest of various groups the government represents the interest of various groups, right? And each organization compete each other in order to influence government, right? So power is distributed. Power is distributed. And when we say that this kind of democracy, what he called poly, polyarchical democracy, what he named polyarchy. He named poly archy. You see the poly matlab? What do you mean poly? What do you mean by word poly? Poly means many. Very good. Very good. Poly means many. Right? Or archy matlab? Patriarchy. Right? Archy matlab kya hoga? Rule. Very good. Very good. Simple word ka matlab nikal lena hai. Right? It means that many organizations rules America. There are a strong associational life in America. Right? And the government represents the interest of several groups. Several groups compete each other. Right? And you know, if you look at Robert Dull was a liberal. Right? And he said that the polyarchy we can find in liberal democracy, in representative democracy, right? What he saw that polyarchy we can find, polyarchy can be found in representative democracy. In representative. So representative democracy for him is a Representative democracy. So in representative democracy, we can find polyarchy. And he argued that American democracy has few features. He talked about six distinct features, right? Six distinct characteristics. What are those characteristics? For example, the one is elected official. 
elected officials if you look at america the members of house are elected one then if you second is they are elected on the basis of free free fair and periodic election or frequent election frequent election right so they are elected through free and fair election right how did he found that you know freedom of expression freedom of expression that is the third distinct features in uh, any represented democracy where that democracy means government is a rule of not one but many right i told you that plural, pluralist understanding was just opposite of monoistic understanding of power and monoistic understanding of power you know or monoistic understanding of sovereignty we have already discussed in the idea of state where the monistic argue that power lie in only one hand that is government right power is not divided power is absolute power is vested in one organization that is called government right and polyarchy the pluralist robert dull was critical to this understanding right and he the fourth features of polyarchy he talked about the associational autonomy so seasonal auto nomi what do you mean by associational autonomy means like farmers group student groups media houses right a lower houses trade unions is all are or women groups lgbt groups black all enjoy associational life everyone have their own association for a student there is a student union for farmers the farmers association for labor for labor association for teacher teacher association for a student a student right and they use freedom they are not influenced by the government they are not following the dictate of the government basically they enjoy autonomy they enjoy freedom right so this is a fourth uh, distinct features in american democracy the fourth the fifth is called you know alternative source of information alter native source of information what do you mean by alternative source of information government has government has no monopoly on media right media are you know basically autonomous there are multiple media houses there are newspaper there are electronic media as well as there are print media then there are another way of you know um, information alternative source of information you can talk about on at this time facebook is a alternative source of information right instagram twitter these all are alternative source of information then people make record video and you know upload it at some website this is called alternative source of information so there are you know alternative sources of information sixth characteristic he talked about inclusive citizenship america if you look at gives citizenship to also foreigners in american democracy is very much inclusive it's not exclusive it does not delist from citizenship basically it gives it a status of citizenship to those who come from the outside who come from the asia who come from the europe who come from africa right so basically these are the distinct features of representative democracy in america right and if you look at groups are organized right are like political party they are organized like press group interest group there are social movements and each compete compete each other for securing their interest they all influences the government 
they all influence the decision making power of the government government does not de- decide on its own no the government decisions are influenced by these all groups that you know that have very much a strong associational life and autonomy in america right so that is pluralist understanding of power right the pluralist understanding of power means power is dist- evenly distributed as i told you that robert dahl is a a scholar right apart from robert dahl you know the traditional pluralists are you know uh, barker ernest barker hero lasky lense right now later on what happened there was another scholar who you know this disagreed with robert dahl and he was charles limdon charles limdon charles limdon you know he agreed with uh, he agreed with uh, robert dahl that there are associate strong associational life in america there are different association like there are the student association there are farmers association right there are um, uh, teachers association there are corporate association right there are you know women association there are you know lawyers association but he said that power is not distributed among the all groups right what happens there are few group within that associational life few group have more influence on the government for example corporate group the corporate association associations are able to influence even more than women or a student the corporate associations are able to influence the government decision more than the student or farmers or teachers or women and therefore we cannot say that power is evenly distributed instead basically few associations like corporate are able to influence the government more than the other associations right and what he called deformed polyarchy what he called deformed polyarchy right so robert dahl talks about polyarchy the rule of many and he un- understood that power is distributed equally among among the all the groups now robert dahl uh, charles lindom agree with robert dahl the power is distributed power is not only vested in the government the government decisions are influenced by the many groups but among the few groups you know among these groups few are able to influence more than the other like corporate associations are able to influence more like media houses media media is also associations so media associations or church association right church association the religious association right so among the all groups few are able to influence more than other right so power is not distributed equally and what he termed right this form of polyarchy as a deformed polyarchy samajh mein aaya hmm tell me clear sahil janis harika everyone
के लिए सविंदर आई विल रिपीट आई विल रिपीट वट डू यू वॉन्ट मी टू रिपीट हरिका डी फॉर्म पोलियर की और द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पोलियर की इट्स डिफॉर्म पोलियर की नाउ इफ यू लुक एट रोबर्ट धल रोबर्ट धल राइट रोबर्ट धल से द पावर इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अमंग इक्वली अमंग द ऑल ग्रुप्स देर आर सेवरल ग्रुप्स so power is dispersed totally among these groups and this distribution of power right is equal basically they are equally powerful corporate group pow- is powerful as much as the student union is farmers are also teachers are also women are also media houses are also church is also right so power is distributed equally among these all groups and they compete each other these all groups compete each other right in order to secure interest from the government they want that government make policy for their favor right and more and more fund and freedom can be allocated to these organizations that is fine but each group are equally able to influence the government each group are equally able to influence the government that is over the what he termed polyarchy right now if you look at you know the reform polyarchy the reform term reform polyarchy was coined by political scientists you know glamour or donald it refers to limited form of political competition and participation in democracy right despite of the many existence of many associations many institutions right and reform polyarchy is a situation when you know uh this all institutions compete each other but few organizations like corporate are able to influence more government than the other groups right more than the other groups right there may be you know there may be free free and fair election there may be rule of law there may be equality there may be inclusion but what happens you know there are there are also corruption no? there are corruption in unequal access to resources restrictions of civil liberty right in this context what happens like farmers association are not able to influence the government as much as corporate corporate have you seen ever corporate are doing protest anywhere in the country anywhere in the world have you seen protest the corporate are on the road and they are protesting against the government no they do all the work silently and very shrewdly they are very intelligent and they have more resources right so basically what happens elite the corporate groups are able to influence the government more than the other group what he called deformed polyarchy right this charles lindom is also called neo neo pluralist neo pluralist means updated pluralist neo means updated one the updated version of that concept like new realism or you know new liberalism making sense harika this understanding of deformed polyarchy now if you look at this deformed polyarchy we can see that in developing society more in deformed polyarchy you can see in developing society more if you look at american american democracy you can see the women association may have more influence than in in the india indian in india women association may have not so strong influence on the government decision making power as in america right so anyway so pluralism pluralism polyarchy means equal distribution of power right among the associations right new pluralism means yes 
if you look at you know there are many things like there are rule of law there are uh, competitive political uh, competitive political process free and fair elections right there are you know but if you look at there are circumstances in which the corporate groups are one group or few groups are more able to influence the government more than the other Anup Mahesh Singh, even the Western country corporate are more powerful. Yes, I'm talking about corporate. You know, uh, this uh, Western democracy. Oh, Donald, you know, talked about in general, like the, he, you know, citing developing society, right? But even in the Western democracy, if you look at corporate, are more powerful. So what he called deformed polyarchy. And if you look at the Robert Dull uh, study of American democracy. he said that american democracy basically american government represents the interest of many association interest of the people interest of the people basically so democracy means rule by the people right so democracy and if you look at in american democracy you can see the elected officials free and fair elections freedom of expression associational autonomy alternative source of information and inclusive citizenship these all are the characteristics of the polyarchical democracy polyarchical means the rule of many i have already told you that poly means many archy means rule so democracy means rule of many democracy means rule of many right so that his 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 study of american democracy did you get the idea clear now now this his understanding of pluralism his understanding of democracy was criticized by elitist elitist was not agreed totally from the robert dull or charles lindbrom now if you look at the elitist elitist basically argued that power vested in the hand of elite not the people right democracy does not mean rule of many and rule of people even in democracy power vested in the rule of elite right so that i will discuss but did you get the idea of pluralism and pluralist understanding of democracy and pluralist understanding of power the pluralist understanding of sovereignty we have already talked about they were critical to the monistic understanding of sovereignty yeah sahil what about you yeah now i will move to elitist theory of power Now, first, we need to understand elitism. What is elitism, or what is elite? So, now, word elite. Elite का क्या मतलब है? What do you mean by the word elite? Elite means best. Elite, elite means best. The suitable. those who are intellectual yes, yes they are wise right they were they may be rich they may be rich right they may be excellent they may be excellent that is meaning of elite right if you look at a uh, a uh, plato plato in plato who rules the state the plato's idealistic in plato state who rules the state basically the philosopher king why philosopher king rules the state you are right you are right very much philosopher king rules but why philosopher king 
become the has power why they they rule yeah because they are wise person they are intellectual they are prudent right they have region the man of region man of region wisdom and that's why they rule so if you look at this concept we can find in plato idea that only elite person the suitable person the best person right the best best suitable person person should rule this is a understanding of elitism right in empirical sense in observation we can see that right the only the minority minority means only few people right exercise the total power in our society even in democracy right in democracy we can find free and fair election elected officials right freedom of information media opposition right inclusive citizenship we you can see rule of law but even though right it is only the privileged only those who have certain feature certain characteristics someone may have rich someone are excellent right someone are wise right they are the best so apart from if you look at pluto pluto give philosopher king to rule apart from plato also given assignment in his guardian class there are two class who are the other class if you look at an ideal state there are two classes to whom plato give vested yeah military so if you look at two classes one is the the wise person the wise person intellect person and secondly you know the military why military should rule why military should rule according to uh, <clears throat> according to uh, plato what are the characteristics military has that class has courage yeah that's why that is a quality they rules because of their quality philosopher kings rules because they are quality they are <clears throat> they have most suitable person because they are wise so we can find the initial study of this understanding of power that power is or should be or is you know vested in <clears throat> the best suitable right so even in democracy right democracy generally understood as a you know the rule by the people democracy generally understood as a rule by the people right but if you, even in democracy it is not right the power is vested in certain institution we'll talk about but don't worry but look the initial when plato talks about he talks about that power is vested or power should be vested in few not the all right in modern modern age if you look at in modern time there are many many philosophers who talked about right to the normative idea normative means through the understanding aisa hona chahiye generally we see that who should rule the meritorious the merit should rule that we should call now what is meritocracy have you heard about this word meritocracy again crazy matlab rule a merit me right courage can be the merit the wisdom can be the merit right so that merit can be anything so plato was the first who talked about that power should be he talked about in very much a uh, normative term normative term matlab aisa hona chahiye this should be normative philosopher always talked about in terms of 
you know should ought to be right the practical thinker like jo practical hai wo baat karta hai what is like machiavelli machiavelli is very much practical he was pragmatic right this is called descriptive idea so normative philosopher like plato also talked about the power should be vested in the people who are meritorious the pragmatic thinker who also see that rule he observe democracy he observe things and see that there are people who rule basically they they are they have some merit they have some feature they have characteristics right someone have <clears throat> excellency someone are rich someone are wise someone are you know have some characteristics right for example have you heard about birbal in uh, in the court of akbar have you heard about akbar birbal story yeah what was the, why birbal is known for why birbal is known for Birbal was yeah Birbal was very famous for his quick answer his quick answer that means his intelligence his wiseness yeah yeah he will usually advise and then quickly advises correct correct thing right so if you look at you know modern theory or you know modern philosopher right so that is the idea of elitism i hope you know got the idea of elitism or elite samajh mein aaya elite aur elitism itna samajh mein aaya dheere dheere banenge hum log kisi bhi concept ko samajhne se pehle aap uska basic samjho aur basic ke baad aap layer dalte raho jitna layer padhoge padhai ka koi ant nahi hai there is no ending of study no ending of knowledge knowledge are so vast right even elitism theory i'll teach you very limited there are many theories already but they are talking about capable 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 elites but normally elites are understood financially no uh, elites are not understood those who are only by wealth no sahil elite are those who have also intellect or some excellency like courage maybe not intellect but courage right generally hum just yes 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 you are right you know the when financially in our society we think that jiske paas paisa hai wahi elite hai hmm, but elite ka matlab wo nahi hai इलीट मीन किसी में कोई ना कोई मैरिट है उसके पास राइट लाइक बुजो जी वॉज अंडरस्टूड एज एलीट यस यस बुजो जी लाइक द यू नो लाइक कॉर्पोरेट कॉर्पोरेट आर एलीट यस द मिलिट्री क्लासेस आर एलीट द पॉलिटिशियंस आर एलीट द इंटेलेक्चुअल क्लासेस आर एलीट राइट दे गेट डायरेक्ट पार्टिसिपेशन इन द स्टेट right state are run by those people basically so if you look at the modern elitism so basically it it is this theory of power is very much critical to the pluralist understanding of power right now if you look at the root philosophy of the root of the philosophy lie in the plato understanding of state and who rule who rules a state plato says it is a philosopher king it is a military and both are called guardian class both classes jointly govern the state why because they have merit in modern age in 1920th century right there are many philosopher who actually talked about this idea that is called elitism and elite theory of democracy or elite theory of power right or the elite state right i'll talk about few like mosca pareto robert robert michel c right mill so i'll talk about each philosopher 
right? If you look at Elitis theory of power, Elite theory of power. So if you look at elite theory of power, it is discussed by Mosca. Right? Then after Mosca, you can find Pareto. Then after Pareto, you can find, you know, Robert Michel. Right? Over after Robert Michel, you can find she right mill. right mill this all author has written about this understanding of power this understanding of you know people right who, who govern the classes right now let me talk about the mosca the first one by one we'll take see that Mosca. Aapko akela ek ka nahi puchega. Generally puchega. You know, ex examine the elite theory of power. Or examine the elite theory of democracy. That kind of, right? Or examine the elite theory of state. Right? Now look at the Mosca. Mosca, our full, his full name is Gantano Mosca. He was a political scientist and he was Italian. Right, he was an Italian political scientist, and the book he wrote is the ruling class. Right, G. Mosca was an Italian political scientist. Right, he wrote a book called the ruling class. The text he written, the ruling class. Ruling class. Now what he says in this text, ki there are two classes in every society. What he said, in each society, there are two classes. One is the ruler and second is the ruled. He said, in each society, there are two classes. Right? Namely, the ruler and the रूल दो कैटेगरी के लोग होते हैं एक जो शासन करते हैं और एक जो होता है वो शासन होते हैं देयर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ पीपल इन इच सोसाइटी द रूलर एंड रूल राइट नाउ इफ यू लुक एट यू नो व्हाई रूलर रूल्स बिकॉज़ इफ यू लुक एट द रूलर हैज दैट कैपेसिटी द रूलर हैज यू नो you know, merit, right, or suitability, they are more suitable, right, they are always in minority, they are always in minority, they are only few people who are able to rule, and most of the people are ruled, who ruler, who yahan pe nahi aayenge, and this is very much natural. If you look at Plato, Plato also, talk, also talked about natural, right? Natural talent of certain people who have courage or who have, you know, uh, region, rationality. So he also talked about there are rulers and there are rules. And he also talked about rulers are few in number. Few in numbers in any society, any society, there are few in numbers. They are very competent. They are very competent and they are manipulated. If you look at this has merit and the rulers is always manipulated. Right? This ruler is 
कॉम्पिटेंट एंड मैनुपुलेटिव मैनुपुलेट वो मैनुपुलेट करता है वो इवन देखोगे आप अपने घर में ही कोई मैनुपुलेट करता रहता है बातें को घुमा देगा Does it happen in our household also? Among the five brother, if you have five or six six member in within the family, someone has this characteristic, manipulative, right? And try to exercise power. होता है कि नहीं होता है? Even among friends, two are manu manipulative or one are one is manipulative. होता है? Right? And that manipulation may come from come due to any region, any region that may be, right? So this is uh, you know most girls' understanding, and rules are very much passive. They are very much passive. If ruler are active, ruler ruler are all always active. They are active, but they are passive. उसको कोई जन उसको लेना देना नहीं है. That is he talked about. That in each society there are two classes: the ruler and the ruled. The ruled ruled are the passive, right? They involved in personal life, in personal life, right? And they are basically simple, right? They don't you know no more manipulation. They are living their life. Peacefully, no problem. So this is a uh, understanding of Mosca, Gander of Mosca. Understood the Mosca understanding of the two classes, the ruler and the ruled. Now I'll talk about Pareto, Wilfredo Pareto. The Wilfredo Pareto gave the idea of circulation of heat. He proposed the concept of circulation of heat. Very very important concept that he proposed. Right? And what he said that the, if you you look at history the history is the graveyard of power full aristocracy right it means the history is a graveyard of elite at any stage of history at any stage of history if you look at marx marx talked about you know the two classes but he talked about the ruling classes the ruling classes in each stage of history there are elite the ruling classes they are elite basically har time pe elite hi log rule karte hain elite means only the few people right and basically they remain in power right at certain point of history there are you know but this elite are ruling but there are also competing elite Com- competing elite competing elite matlab those are elite but not in power what happens at certain point of time they compete but what happens they replace the earlier elite they replace the earlier earlier elite and they capture power again the earlier elite is a competing elite at each point there are right so there are two sets of elite or maybe maybe multiple elite set of elite now ruling elite is are those who rules basically but there are also competing elite who try to replace the ruling elite and sometimes they replace it masses remain same masses remain ruled masses remain ruled right masses ko masses to hamesha ruled hota hai right for example if you look at the india right who was the ruling elite before independence if you look at before independence who was the ruling class 
before india uh, sorry before uh, before independence who was the ruling class in india the british and the people who are patronized by british right and if you look at who are the competing elite congress congress was competing elite what happened congress replaced the ruling elite unko bhaga diya now congress became ruling elite congress became ruling elite after some time what happened who were competed who competed the congress bjp na right so bjp replaced congress no bjp rules bjp rules now who is the competing here again again congress plus many the india block now what india block wants to this replace the bjp what happens even if you may find that the same people who are ruling within the congress are part of the bjp or who are part of bjp when the congress will come many people will shift from bjp to congress they are ruling basically wo shift kar jate hain yahan se party badal lete hain you have seen many times a same party who were already in congress very strong position shifted to bjp have you observed that right or sometimes when other party come to power they shift to that party in uttar pradesh you know it happens frequently you must have heard about ayaram gayaram have you heard about ayaram gayaram within 24 hours in haryana a member shifted three party right to get power yeah it is funny but that person is elite basically sahil that person is elite one we can make fun of that that's no issue we can making fun of modi or we are making fun of you know the sa or other or we are making fun gan uh, gandhi family and other people like any any person you can name right but basically they are elite basically right so he talked about you know there are elite and there are competing elite and this circulation happens if you look at entire history the history is a circulation of elite the grave graveyard of history the, sorry the written history is a history of graveyard of elite ruling elite there are competing elite one set of ru- ruling elite rules amongst the various various competitive contending groups and in due course of time right the contending elite or competing elite replaced the other elite the ruling elite right and it continued in history right and if you look at the pareto he is saying right that the ruler class have you know that kind of quality the quality of foxes and the quality of lion again he is borrowing from machiavelli if you look at ruling class ruling class right the elite have the quality of foxes they are clever and they have also lion the quality of lion they are also ferocious this quality a ruling class have am i making sense of this circulation of elite picture ke through samjhaya hai but i hope uh, written to already hai hi yeah savindar everyone anupama sir competing classes are also ruled but they are competing na yes they are ruled but they are competing they are trying to replace it and it re- they replace it the ruling class are not perpetual really eternal elite perpetual ruling class they are being replaced by the competing ruling class tahil 
of course the rules have also potential yes why not it should you, know, you can be a minister or you can be defense minister you can be home minister you can be uh, you know the prime minister of india sahil if you have a certain quality right and and what 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 mosca try to say is you know the competent the manipulative active in politics so of course rule it's not that rule to have no capacity yes if among the rules if someone develop that kind of quality they can be the ruling like look at the new mla the first time mla his father was look at the aam aadmi party aam aadmi party the many a member of the aam aadmi party when first time they come to the power only you know many of you are are the first generation arvin kejriwal is the first generation ruler ruling class ruler, ruler isn't it right his father was not a mla or 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 you know the in politics it happens fine so this is basically for a to understanding of the circulation of elite and what he said that the written history is a history or a graveyard of the ruling elite right in each time period there is a one ruling class among the several competing ruling right competing ruling class and one set of ruling class is replaced by the other set of ruling class and how history how uh, you know elites circulate in history right so history is a very much circular हमेशा इलीट एक दूसरे को बदलता है मासेसार रूल्ड बेसिकली मासेसार रूल्ड बेसिकली दे आर फ्यू इन नंबर हम्म नाउ वी कम टू द अनदर अनदर स्कॉलर हिज नेम इज रॉबर्ट मिशेल रॉबर्ट मिशेल Right. Robert Michel was a German Italian sociologist and wrote, he wrote a book political parties right he is a well known a well known german italian sociologist right wrote a text political parties political parties now if you look at he studied german socialist party you know german socialist party german german socialist democratic party can you tell me i have taken this party name when i taught you something yeah when i taught edward bernstein yeah very good very good it was a socialist party karl koski yeah 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 when i taught you the effort program effort program was made by karl koski and edward bernstein right and it was a socialist party the socialist party understood as a party of the masses the party of all basically he studied this idea and what he did he applied mosca he applied you know the pareto and also the weber's theory of bureaucracy right and what he said that ki there is a tendency in or each organization koi bhi organization ho chahe socialist ho political party ho chahe wo right wing political party ho चाहे वो कोई भी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी हो चाहे आम आदमी पार्टी हो कोई भी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी ले लो कोई भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ले लो पॉलिटिकल पार्टी तो छोड़ो कोई भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ले लो प्लूटो साइस ले लो प्लूटो साइस ले लो राइट या अपना घर ले लो तुम्हारा घर भी एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है फैमिली इज फैमिली इज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन फैमिली भी एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है राइट सो ही टॉक्ड अबाउट दैट एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन 
देर इज टेंडेंसी ये टेंडेंसी क्या है भाई ये जो टेंडेंसी है हर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में वो टेंडेंसी क्या है टेंडेंसी ये है राइट right? कि पावर इज कंसेंट्रेटेड इन फ्यू हैंड दे मे बी यू नो इट मे बी यू मे फील दैट दिस दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज अ डेमोक्रेटिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और फैमिली इज अ डेमोक्रेटिक फैमिली राइट बट टेंडेंसी क्या होता है पावर इज वेस्टेड इन फ्यू हैंड ये हर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के आसपास है फैमिली में भी यही हाल है इवन इफ यू हैव इफ यू आर यू नो मेंबर ऑफ एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यू कैन फाइंड द सिमिलर थिंग सो ही स्टडीड जर्मन सोशलिस्ट पार्टी राइट विच डिक्लेयर दैट दिस पार्टी बिलोंग्स टू ऑल राइट और इवन कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना सीपीसी और द कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ सीपी कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ रशिया right it may talked about that is party of the people or congress congress i'm talking about congress in the time of freedom struggle congress was a mass party right or today today bjp or any plutus is or even the family right there is a tendency this is remember this is a tendency what is tendency that tendency the tendency is that power is vested in few hand the power is really exercised by only few people and what he called the iron law of oligarchy ye jo this ye jo tendency hai oligarchical institution ka oligarchy matlab few What do you mean by oligarchy? Oligarchy rule of few. Oligarchy means I taught you the term notion of oligarchy. What is the meaning of oligarchy? What is the meaning of oligarchy? Anyone? The rule of few. Yeah. So this is you know this is a thing that you can find anywhere. What you no? Know, what we call iron law of oligarchy. The very famous theory. that robert michel has given that any organization we you name it may appear that it is a democratic it may appear it is a you know for all but it is not look at the german socialist party you know claiming that they are for the people right but this is tendency what tendency the power the decisions are made by only few considered look at the cabinet for example present cabinet present cabinet you know i hope you know cabinet the cabinet here there are many ministry you have defense minister you have finance minister you, right you have finance minister you have home minister you have prime minister right what is the tendency within the cabinet what is tendency within the cabinet any cabinet of anywhere in the world do you think that power is you know decision are taken by all the ministry of rural ministry of urban ministry of commerce ministry of textile do you think that decisions are taken by all within the cabinet what do you think so if no then who takes decision in the cabinet who takes the real decision what is the tendency within the cabinet no head of the department only few person only few four to five minister including prime minister is a part of that takes the all decisions even the decision of other department even the decision of other department you do this do this don't do this don't do this do this this is called kitchen cabinet have you heard about
the term kitchen cabinet. Right, so look at iron law of oligarchy. Iron law of oligarchy is applied here. The tendency is called that law. The tendency that decisions shall be taken by only few, that tendency is called law. That is iron law. Iron law matlab permanent law. This is eternal law of oligarchy. Personal member of PM in, in kitchen cabinet. Yes, 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 yes. PM is a part of kitchen cabinet. Now, even today, if you look at the today's cabinet, even the not four or five ministers take decisions. Three, maximum three ministers take all the decisions, including the PM, of course. PM and HM. Right, one more you can say. Right, is me up FM be rak sakte hai, it's FM to pass quick power. Mein. Right, see, it's, it's actually follow the instruction. Kis ko rakhu mein? Third mein kis ko rakhu ge? JP Nadda ko rakhu ge? Ya us ko rakhu ge? Kaun sa Singh hai? Right, the defense minister, you can find anything. The home minister and prime minister is much, much power. Already many rak diya home minister. Amit sir. And the Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, most powerful. They takes most of the decisions. Third, me kisko rakhna hai batao. Any, any defense minister you can take or right, you can put two, three people within the one. No issue. But that is the law, right? This call Oli. He termed it this tendency. He termed it Iron Law of Oligarchy. So, did you get the idea of Iron Law of Oligarchy? Did you get the idea of Iron Law of Oligarchy? If I say, what is Iron? If I question, a question do. What is Iron Law of Oligarchy? Comment. Will you write it? Huh? Let me give you a few, few more questions. What is circulation of healing? You can take example from the your practice. Right? Aap kahi se bhi example le sakte hai, no problem. What is circulation of healing? Will you write this question? Two questions at home? Right. Now, third, you know, I'll talk about C right mill. C right mill. C right mill made a uh, wrote a book on American democracy. Just after the Robert Dahl had written the book, and he termed American democracy as a polyarchy. So, C. Wright Will, you know, was a very influential and he studied American democracy. He studied American democracy like Robert Dull had studied. Robert Dull conclusion was different. Robert Dull, you know, knowing the fact is different than the c right mail now c right mail has argued that america is ruled by a set of oligarchy what is talked about that america is ruled by a set of oligarchy manlab kuch log hai unka set hai right yani ki Set of oligarchy means a pura ka pura packet hai. Ab us packet mein hai kaun kaun. For example, if you, you know, agar koi gift de jata hai, usme baut chiz hote hain. Do, chaar, paanch chiz. You open it. Now look at who these, who these are the set of oligarchy. Basically, if you look at 
the first group is politician the politicians basically rule the state then top military officials top military officials and third is big corporate big corporate these three are the part of this set of oligarchy direct bill was very critical to the pluralist understanding of democracy and she talked about that american democracy is a elite democracy right american democracy is a elite democracy he was a very critical to pluralist understanding of democracy did you get the idea right samajh mein aaya so she right mean understood that american democracy is ruled by nexus of leading groups a nexus of a set of oligarchy right and what he termed the power elite what he termed power elite to whom to this three group this power elite rules america this power elites rule america who are the power elite it is a set of oligarchy politicians top military officials and big corporate right the power elite comprises three set of oligarchy or three oligarchy the politicians top military officials and big corporate basically right so if you look at the big corporates dominates entire economy economic decisions the top military decides the entire bureaucratic structure and politicians decides right the all political decisions and sometimes the combination of three and that's why this is a power elite sometimes combination of right so if you understand that american people are you know be better empowered to influence the government there are associational life there are different organization who influence american democracy as robert dal argue t right mill said no robert it's not like that the america is ruled by the power elite so we have discussed two things as of now the pluralist understanding pluralist understanding of power and we have talked about elite understanding of power now when you write a pluralist understanding of power you write also critical point of elitism right the critical understand elite understanding the criticism posed by the elite when you write elite understanding we write you can you know write critic criticism of the pluralism the pluralist understanding samajh mein aaya that whenever the question is on elite you also make the idea of robert dal charles lindom right when you write pluralist you also criticize by the elitism now i'll give you break for 5 minutes and then i'll talk about the steven lukes on power right he wrote a book called power a radical view this book was written in 1974 and very interesting of analysis of power that steven lukes has given 
good yeah so do you have any query any question from the what we have discussed elitist theory of power and the pluralist understanding of power not yet okay now if you look at you know there was a debate already there elitist theory pluralist theory right now steven lucks has studied the power how power operates right and there was all ongoing debate on power the elitist theory of power there was a there was a pluralist theory of power among the political scientists in america in that context you know steven lucks also study power studied power and you know he was a political scientist uh, american political scientist and also sociologist and his uh, basic question was how to define power theoretically and how to you know study power empirically how to study power empirically and how to define power theoretically usko define kaise kiya jaye aur usko padha kaise jaye right usko study kaise kiya jaye aur usko define kaise kiya jaye now if you look at you know what he said in his book power is a contested concept that i used in the first day that line is actually i have borrowed from stephen lewis what is a contested concept contested concept means there is no one way of power defining power there are multiple multiple way of power right and stephen lewis defined three dimension of power he defined three dimension of power three dimensions of power he said ki aisa nahi ki power invested in elite power invested in all or a pluralist no right he basically defined three you know dimension of power and you know first he defined power as a decision making power as decision making the question is who decides right who decides that is the power now for example in two person a and b who decides things so this is he said for example government government decides you can say that government is a, has power right or if the people decides you can say the people have power or you can say corporate decides you can say corporate has power right or who decides basically so power as a decision making we can decide power so there is a one dimension of power this is basically one dimensional of power right for example hobbes for hobbes who decides the power who decides who has power to decide according to hobbes tell me according to hobbes who decides who takes decision state yeah state right the governor the, the sovereign power right the government the state right decides power so this is he called one dimensional power this is called one dimensional power right this is one dimensional power right in which we say that in which we see that who takes decision who takes the final decision
right? For example, for Hobbes, the state was a powerful, right? Or Hobbesian notion of power. Hobbes understanding of power. Right? Basically, in which who takes the chain? In which the state, the Leviathan takes all decision. Leviathan takes all decision. So Leviathan is powerful. State is powerful. This he called one dimensional power. What he called one dimensional power. Generally, you can see that power is in one dimension. One dimension. Mein hai. Who is taking decision and who is obeying. Now, second, he said the second dimensional power, like power as agenda city. One is power as a decision making, that is one dimensional power. Second, power as agenda city. This is basically two dimensional power. This is two dimensional power. What does it mean? Okay, decision to choro. Who sets the agenda? Right? For example, uh, for uh, for instance, for education, for employment, who sets the agenda? What happens? Sometimes people set the agenda. Like RTI. Who set that RTI? The people. Sometimes corporates set the agenda. Sometimes media set the agenda. Right? Sometimes you can say that government set the agenda. Government set the agenda. Right? For the notion of secularism or the uniform civil code or anything. Now, so power is not something, you know, in one dimension. The power is second dimensional. There are two dimensions. Right? So if government influences and also the people influences, sometimes corporate influences, right? So if you look at, you know, who sets the agenda, that is important, right? And it's not that always state support sets the agenda, right? So he basically, he was uh, replying to the elitist. It's not that all the time. Government sets the agenda. There are sometimes, you know, people sets the agenda for employment, for education, for health, right? So, this is two dimension of power. The agenda setting. Power agenda, agenda setting. Right? So, basically, sometimes we say that people are failed to set the agenda. Sometimes we say that government failed to set the agenda. But if you look at some time, even the current time from 2014, most of the time government has set the agenda. Right? People fail to set the government of, uh, set the agenda for the government. Right? So this is a second dimensional power. This is a two dimensional power. Right? Sometimes government sets the agenda. And sometimes people set the agenda. I'm making sense to you. Everyone, right?
right so sometimes when government sets the agenda sometimes people voluntarily support the government when the, sometimes people set the agenda right when sometimes people set the agenda the government come and implement it the government takes a decision but it is not that government takes always decision as people said no government sometimes influences the agenda government set the agenda for the people to quarrel for example corona jihad or love jihad or this jihad and that jihad right so anyway now this is a second dimension of power now third he talk about power as a thought control process this is a three dimensional power and this is a very much closer to the neo marxist approach of power right now look at the gramsci's hegemony or althusser interpellation right how or or if you look at Her- herbert marcus one dimensional man right now who controls this this our thought according to herbert marcus or herbert even according to the gramsci who controls our thought our thought our activity who controls thought according to gramsci according to althusser or gramsci who controls right or according to herbert marcus no answer who controls our thought according to gramsci according to althusser No. capitalist yes savinder right it is a capitalism who controls our thought according to althusser capitalism capitalism controls our thought of course through civil society of course through civil society civil society is an agency who manufacture hegemony ha huh? but capitalism controls our thought we buy you know a uh, tab and we think that we are doing for our own interest but that is not your interest your interest is sort of the others interest sometimes you watch facebook and you see that oh ho oh, it's good enjoyment hmm? i'm serving my interest i'm happy let me tell you that you are not serving yourself you are serving to the capitalist sometimes you watch uh, you know uh, netflix oh ho oh, let me sit very peacefully and calm and let me watch a uh, episode you think that yes i this is mine this is not yours that is capitalist if you watch in netflix or any ott right you think that you are being benefited basically the final benefactor are the capitalist our mind thought process has been controlled we cannot think in alternative way am i making sense to you i'm making sense to you everyone right so here there is no one two this is third one right one two to hai teesra aa jata hai ki thought controlling process hamara jo thought hai na usi us pe bhi kabza hai we are not thinking our own our alternative wo capitalist or capitalist culture basically the value the dominant value norm customs all are the capitalist one they are serving capitalist not to the people this is not the people own their own on thought right 
so basically he talked about power as a thought controlling process power as thought controlling process this is a third dimension of power this is third dimension of power and this notion of power is very close you know new marxist analysis of new marxist understanding of thought controlling process thought controlling process within capitalism this is third dimension of power and this notion of power is very closer to neo marxist understanding of thought controlling process in capitalism in capitalism oh sorry yeah right it this is third dimensions of power and this notion of power is very closer close to the new marxist understanding of thought controlling process in capitalism right now if you look at capitalism capitalism controls the thought process through the brand culture you know the brand culture जब हम कहा जाते हैं शोरूम जाते हैं एंड वी कंपेयर ब्रांड एडिडास का लू या उसका लू मामा बोलते बेटा यही ले लो नहीं ये लोकल है राइट आई एम मेकिंग सेंस टू यू राइट कैपिटलिज्म कैपिटलिज्म कंट्रोल्स thought process process through through spreading its on value norms norms attitude capitalism thought process controls thought process through spreading it on value norms attitude belief right it is see true you know true information and information and communication technology information and communication technology yeah they had produced brand culture they have produced you no know, its own culture like brand culture brand culture is a one brand culture or you can say the royal culture ha daru ke naam pe naam rehta hai royal 
राइट या कुछ भी नाम रहता रॉयल एरिस्टोक्रैट वॉट एवर ब्रांड कल्चर रॉयल कल्चर राइट और फ्री कल्चर बेसिकली दे आर नॉट फ्री आवर राइट आवर थॉट प्रोसेस आर हाईली कंट्रोल्ड आवर थॉट प्रोसेस इज हाईली कंट्रोल्ड प्रोसेस इज हैवियली कंट्रोल heavily controlled and you know often we are unable to think alternative alternative think alternative right this is this is yeah this is uh, you know this is operation of power no what looks called third dimension of power third dimensions of power and pluralist and you know the elitist missing this third dimension of power the pluralist and you know elitist are missing you know the this this notion of power in their analysis right so if you look at the power is very much essentially contested concept did you get the idea yeah everyone tell me have you written it done okay did you get it clearly everyone yeah so with this i will stop here and in the next class i'll talk about you know the max weber karl marx understanding of power then i'll talk about fuko understanding of power and the nietzsche understanding of power any question i will address tomorrow if you have a question you can ask me harika did you get the idea of this three all three dimensions of power very good very good so let me stop here see you tomorrow Thank mm-hmm. you.